It's Thanksgiving weekend, and we brought a friend. What it's Dr. up? Sean, Sean Lee me. joins us for a festivus podcast about money and business and stuff. Sean Lee, the, the author of, of How to Play Guitar Like You've Been Playing for 15 Years in Five Minutes or Less. Um, New York Times bestseller. Um, we're getting into the interview in this episode. He cries, just like Ariana Grande. Enjoy. Amen. Go Sigma Alpha Chi. Sigma Alpha Chi back at it again, dude. They couldn't stop us back in 94, and they can't stop us now, Stuart. Oh, man. Did you hear Did you hear the news about Nathan? You mean the artist formerly known as Little Peep? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. I heard he overdosed on joy. Yeah, he was a great, great leader of the fraternity. Ricker and Bond, everyone. Will Sean Lee be joining us today? I, I texted him a link, and maybe it'll be like one of those things where you bring him in later in the show. Got it. Now, what was his intrigue with joining such a program like this? No idea. He <laughs> just asked me if he could hop in an interview or in an episode. He, I said, sure, why not? Were you guys like hanging out today or just a cold mm. call? No, we were hanging out on Friday, and I mentioned it. And then, like today, in a text, I was like, "Yo, I got a pod at five. And he was like, "Yo, let me join." That's what happened. I was like, "This is serious business, buddy." That's this what is happens no... at the top. At the top of bull runs and manias, homies want to hop on, dude. For those who weren't watching video, which is none of you, because a lot of video for this, and we're a very visual podcast. We're both wearing glasses. Yes. So pod in, glasses. In this, <laughs> PGs. In this scenario, he is Stuart and I am Glenn. Yes. We went to U of A law school in 94. Yes. And now we uh, talk about University of Arizona Wildcats basketball <laughs> on a podcast every Thursday. <laughs> I we mean, both have two be, kids in high school. There um, has to be so many, so many old UA alums that are hopping on a pod to discuss UA basketball. My my wife is like, why are you always talking about basketball on that podcast? And like, uh, I'm like, why can't I enjoy things? It's my I'm passion, like, you know. My 800 pound wife from uh, <laughs> Alabama that I met at U of A. There's for sure <laughs> so many Arizona basketball podcasts. And, yes. Uh, are they doing better than this? You know, who's to say? I, I think Likely. It's the knowledge that we learn on the way that is the real value of this pod. Not hard to do better than Ricker and Bond. <laughs> it's really just a research exercise. And, yes. uh, you know, at the top of Bull Runs, the homies want to hop on and you can talk about music and stuff, as as I would assume. Uh, what's going on? Today's the Thanksgiving episode. Yes. For those what are you thankful for, Glenn? Still freaking celebrate such a pagan holiday. I think the pagans actually like it. Can we oh. find what a pagan Israel is? Like, oh God, you're one of those. Like, can we just like? Can pagan we just... is a just a religious affiliation. Any religious affiliation that is not the big boys, you know. We're talking about like those Nordic, Nordic religions. Where you can probably on the continent of Africa probably got some paganism or something. Do you remember a couple of years ago when like everyone was like, "Oh fuck America, fuck the Fourth of July." Fuck Thanksgiving, fuck Columbus Day, right. and now everyone's kind of chilled out. I don't remember the era specifically. Was it pre or post? It was like twenty twenty ish, like Black yeah, Lives Matter Black era. There is a whole lot of whole lot of shake up in the infrastructure of the world. Oh, that's good water. I like it, dude. I got I enjoy it. The infrastructure is pretty good. We should probably, you know, there's a few bridges. Let's uh, let's look at them. They've been here for, <laughs> they've been here for 100, 100 years. Bridges, yes. Let's take a look. Dude, Stuart, glad back at it, dude. <laughs> On the architecture pod, dude, so many architecture podcasts as well. We should. <laughs> There's so many podcasts. There was a. Uh... Hey Siri, stop! <laughs> oh my goodness, Siri. Sorry, I was it was playing Bonobo again. Uh, I, I told you about the parody podcast called Talking Tua that is about, or whatever the, it's a podcast that satirizes uh, a intellectual conversation about the Hawk Tua Girls podcast. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's a clip, pretty meta, on meta, double meta, triple meta, of a podcast talking about that podcast, talking about Talk to a. I don't think it was a, an official podcast, but it was a cl- sketch clip. Guys, let's wrap this up. Like, <laughs> podcasting used to be an art. <laughs> Right. Podcasting used to be a way of self-expression, <laughs> and now it's just become a fucking a joke to most of you. Can't, I don't think I've said this on the pod. <laughs> Can't believe Kai Sinat is 22. Dude. He looks 31. I saw Kai Sinat. He does look old. I, I saw Kai Sinat was celebrating hitting 600,000 Twitch subscribers, right. and I thought, that's not that many people but he's like the most famous twitch guy i remember six hundred thousand when you were number one with six hundred thousand on youtube that was like in 2008 so that just goes to show how difficult it is to get subscribers on twitch this is the subscribers are deeper in the funnel but um there was a uh, shout out everybody's boy pirate uh dang it i'm not logged in um there's a there's a Twitch streamer that like averages two mil views on Twitch, which is the most watched streamer on Twitch. And when he peaked, it was like six mil uh, viewers, I believe. Could I be wrong? I don't think so. You can't a lot of people for a Twitch billion. stream. Yeah, it's not six billion. It's not Twitch can handle that kind of traffic. Well, that was the the peak traffic in Twitch history was his was his stream. So it's Damn. This, the guy from this guy from Spain allegedly, as I've uh, seen on reels. That's a lot, but you know what's crazy is fucking Netflix, which is known for literally streaming, can't handle a little fifty-five million people oh, stream. They're they're known for not live streaming. Yes, but as a rebuttal to that, they have the most cash in the world. <laughs> hey, I have glasses too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I can I could do this too. <laughs> um, you know, like like I don't know, like that should have been like a flawless. I know I'm not trying to minimize the, right, right, the right. effort it takes to stream such a such a program, but when you when you're sitting on the most cash in the really streaming cool. in the streaming game, come on. Do a like, little stress testing maybe. Yeah, just a little bit. So someone's going to get fired there. WWE oh. is taking their flagship program raw <laughs> raw onto Netflix off of cable streaming uh Ooh. which is quite it's ridiculous dude it's really actually crazy uh, really really crazy it's the longest running cable episodic show in cable history i'm canceling my cable That's, this is it <laughs> it's crazy and it's going to be live on Netflix this yeah and fucking been- Going on for decades. How much is cable? I don't know. Like, last time I paid, it was like, for internet and cable. Fuck, I don't know. I want to say it was like a lot. It was like 80 bucks a month or something. And Netflix is like, I think their cheapest one is like $6 a month or $7 a month. Sure, sure, sure. I, I bought Apple TV MLS playoffs to watch the rest of the soccer playoffs. I was about to go on at Amazon Prime to watch NBA stuff, but that's only with a NBA League Pass subscription, which isn't exactly Amazon Prime streaming. But I did watch a little bit of NFL as we bring on our uh, as we bring on our local NFL correspondent, who has a lot to say about NFL. As we as we all know, Sean Lee, uh, as he comes in here. A little laggy, real big on NFL. Sean Lee, what's going on in in the NFL world? <laughs> oh, okay. What's up, Ricker and Vaughn? <laughs> hey, Sean. Thanks for thanks for joining us on the Sean program Lee, today. What's going crazy, on, man? We, what's happening, we y'all? Also have glasses. We wore glasses uh, in camaraderie. Uh, Are my is the audio coming okay over my end? It's the yeah, sounds I've good. AirPods, man. Dude, AirPods. Let's talk about AirPods for a second. Yeah. Let's just back up. Probably some of Apple's best work. So are AirPods reading like my brain vibrations when it comes to audio, or is it picking it up with a microphone that's like on two sides of my head? It's a you know microphone. Okay. It's just a really good microphone. Yeah. 
Not sure exactly how it works because it's it kind of far from your, your mouth, but it sounds pretty fucking good. Sick. You thought it was reading your mind? No, I thought it was listening to like because I know like when we talk, there are like vibrations in your head. Yeah, yeah. And, like and I know, I, yeah, yeah. I thought that's what the audio it was like translating that into. I mean, that's basically audio. what a microphone is, eh? Yeah, the microphone's more like here, you know, as opposed oh, to your here. skull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sean Lee, yeah. Oh, dude, Rick and Bond. I know this is crazy. This is awesome. Welcome to it, dude. I've been wanting to coming back, come back on the show since 20, 2017, 2016. Tell us about yourself for our listeners. Who wait, wait, what? Twenty eighteen. Were you on it? Um, a I was on the show. Ago. I was on the show once. Um, I used to live with Ricker and Bond. My name is Sean. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of. I mean, <laughs> stuff to play. You're a you're a musician of sorts, eh? Play music, Los Angeles, which is uh, just uh, another grind. And Los Angeles, did you grow up there, Sean Lee? I grew up in Pasadena, right? But I had family in Koreatown, and um, and then I moved out back out here. But yeah, I've I've actually never left Los Angeles once I've been out here. You know, so Los How did you get into music? Um, damn. Okay, this is. <laughs> I thought we were gonna talk about like this. Whole, I was reading this whole topic. What's it? Oh yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. to get the audience familiar with. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um. I got into music since I was a kid. I just played, played piano, playing in the church, played. It's pretty, it's pretty gay. School, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, church is kind of not. Church, church is kind of the opposite of gay. If you think about it, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh man! Oh god! All right. Yeah, but now I'm here. You know, your relationship with the Lord is it is it strong? Is it softer than back in the day? What do you think? You know, there used to be two sets of footsteps in the sand, and now there's only one. And I believe it's the, the Lord Jesus Christ carrying me right, right. through each trial and tribulation that we've gone through this day. <laughs> because you were in <laughs> Vietnam and your legs blew up, eh? <laughs> only one of my legs. It was, a, it was three sets of footprints <laughs> on my crutches. Now, the real question <laughs> is, it's the day before Thanksgiving. It's supposedly according to our good friend miles it's the biggest drinking night of the year or the biggest going out night of the year is the day before thanksgiving so what is the move fellas ricker you're yeah, in wednesday san diego so maybe if you leave now you can i could be there like, by, a, by nine at least that's, that's yeah easy. yeah if you want to get fucking crazy but you know no. <laughs> i'm just gonna take the listen i come sleep here bro thanks for the offer that's good to good to know is there any Thanksgiving traditions you guys do in your family? Are you guys hitting families up or what, dude? Yeah, I'm going to be eating with my parents. Oh, sick. Thank God. <laughs> Once a year, he sees his parents. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, not I'm Korean. I'm Korean, so we don't really do Thanksgiving. I Koreans mean, have their own thing. It's like it's kind of, it varies when it is, but it's, it like it goes to the lunar calendar, but it's around this time as well. But are you American, Sean Lee? Is my question. <laughs> I am American, man. I'm here. What a beautiful cycle in it. Well, like a lot of like Asian holidays, they they revolve around the moon, lunar cycle, so they don't happen. They kind of like, they don't happen on the same day every year. Like you know, like for us, like Fourth of July is the Fourth of July. So that's, it's not like when the moon. It's the full moon in July. You know. Right. But like a lot of Asian holidays are like, oh, the first full moon of that time cycle is the holidays. And that like fluctuates. You know, cyclical, less machine. Exa cycle. Exactly. Exactly. A little fluid, eh? Trans. So, once you leave the Roman imperialistic um, cycle, like the calendar, right. you find that people around the world are pretty free, you know, free. they don't really care right. about. That's why Christmas that's why Eve versus when Christmas in yeah. Asia, dude. That's why you go in the Philippines. Right? I've been trying to break out of this Gregorian calendar for years, and it's just <laughs> like, you, way too you hard. Trying to say, hey, dude, let's just let's focus on the lunar, but then everybody at my corporate go accounting job says, no, dude, Q four and all that. Yeah, like you think like our ancestors use Outlook, like Microsoft Outlook. To <laughs> Like scheduled dinner and the hunt, like no, it was like all based on instinct. Also, dude, daylight. 
Asian countries, I think, are the first place to normalize transgenders, man. Because, like, they, they turned it into a booming industry. Right. If you think about it, you know, like... But is that no for one in the Asian people there, or is that for the Huats that come over? It doesn't... I mean, the money goes to the fucking Thailand, you know? The money goes to fucking Cambodia. But do Thai, Thai people be... Is the lady boy market for Thai people? Oh, no, okay. but, but Thai people are definitely, like... Right, making money off of the tourists. Yeah, how much revenue do you think that generates per year? Don't worry, I'm looking up Lady Boy time. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel, like, I feel like that's like a Google search away. And can or I invest? A big oh, search away. Chat GPT. I got to go to Grok if I want to do that. Dude. It says, oh my it. god, woke GPT is more <laughs> like it. <laughs> is Gronk the un, um, unfiltered Chat GPT now? Twitter's GPT that is probably just as restrictive as any other one. I guess. Uh. Have you guys ever heard of Blue Sky? Yeah, I'm on Blue Sky. What You're is on that? Blue Sky. Yeah. It's apparently the hot new Twitter clone. Um, mm. It was a internal project at Twitter until um, Elon bought it. It spun off into its own company. It was started by the Twitter founder Jack Dorsey, but they kicked him out apparently, or he he left the company. So now it's like its own thing, and it's picking up some steam. With the with the folks with the folks that like to hop on different well, social networks, people and you, Bon Jen said Twitter had. Did, was your Twitter algorithm actually that beheady? It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So I haven't been on Blue Sky, but apparently you can choose like different algorithms or something. It, you can. I've been on it for a little bit, and you like it prompts you to like things like your first ten likes and your followers. I'm still like I'm more trained on at twitter than i am blue sky right now but like have you ever been on, have you ever been on like a completely fresh like search engine like a new new browser or something and you haven't typed anything in and you're yeah. super scared scared to do it because no <laughs> whatever you type it is going to set the precedent for every single thing like a new youtube I, yeah no that happened to my work recently we got a new uh computer so i opened chrome and it's like pick something to watch and i was like what the fuck <laughs> Like oh, it, didn't even, it didn't even didn't even give me options. It was just like type something into the board. Type in hot midget on midget action. Just get it warmed up. <laughs> Girls yeah, apparently, you can reset your Instagram <laughs> algorithm now. So if you want to clean it up, all the my Instagram algorithm is carefully curated to me, man. <laughs> my shit is so good. Just like just the most offensive memes you could ever see. How how can you train it? Um, you can reset it. You can reset it. I saw that. Or just goes to zero again. Yeah, it just like starts fresh as if you have a new account. Dude, all my stuff, like I, okay, I kind of purged all my followings at the same time with Instagram and Twitter, but now it's all just like cool, boring stuff ever since I did that. And I kind of am curious about how people's, like Twitter especially, get so bogged down with stuff they don't want to see. Like, I don't know. It's stuff they want to see, bro. I'm, you like one behead yeah. video, it just keeps, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's my bad. People watching it. But you can you can you can say like oh I don't want to see this and it's pretty good at like taking you that stuff out. The, the yeah, the people. Want I had to do that with Instagram models. Like I had too many girls like with big titties and big asses like on my explore feed, and I was like, this is probably not very good for how I visualize the world. Right. And then I, I discovered that you can click like the three dots and go like not interested. And for like literally like two days, my Instagram feed was so clean. And then it goes it back to like, what you really want. Yeah. <laughs> then I then I looked up one bad bitch and then it fucking ruined the whole thing. <laughs> You're like, oh, he's back. Yeah. We save these for you. I got the same ones too. It's like they were waiting. Yeah, dude. It's fucking crazy. Fucking yeah. social media. What are your thoughts on um social media use for children? Apparently it is the number one cause of anxiety for kids under eighteen. It is pretty up there on the cause of suicide and depression for kids. And um, social media companies keep getting fined for it, but no law has been put in place that will like ban kids from social media because they make too much goddamn money off the kids. Yeah. PBH. How do they correlate those facts? Like, How do they correlate the deaths to like, like social media? What does that mean? Like caused by social media? Yeah, so like if you if you like let's say you already have like suicidal thoughts or something, then yeah. fucking Instagram is gonna like start feeding you like content about like self harm and like 
what happens after death and, you know, shit like that. Or, you know, kids just, like, in general comparing themselves to others. Or, like, if you have, like, like a fucking, what's the fucking word? A body dysmorphic disorder. Is that a real thing? A body dysmorphic disorder. It'll, like, yeah. start feeding you, like, shit to, like, reinforce the fact that, like, you're fucking overweight. Just because the algorithm has, has no idea. It just thinks that because you're engaging on content, you like that stuff. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't segregate between age. It, like, attacks everybody the same. And oh, really? Yeah, it's been proven that, like, Instagram <laughs> attacks. Well, yeah, they won't do it because, like, kids aren't smart enough to be like okay that's enough instagram for today they keep looking yeah, at it like if you say your age is like below 14 just like nerf it a little bit on the algo side oh yeah they could do that but they won't <laughs> I, if you're also a kid with like body dysmorphic issues like i don't think they probably stem from your social media use like they're probably more exacerbated by it but like it's probably from well yeah else, you know? it's usually never it's usually never like oh it starts with the social media but yeah but it, it ends by the social media yeah like you like we all just said like oh like you like one picture of a bad bitch and it just keeps like sending you more you know like, it ends with an x an x on your death on your uh your cemetery tombstone yeah it's like oh at least he had 71 followers oh damn damn so yeah I got this. I bet I do. But dude, remember when kids were playing video? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. Let's go. But like, remember when kids were playing video games and the sim like similar statistics were coming out? Yeah, where it was like people congregate. Yeah. It comes yeah. To stuff and you know. I feel like video games are a little different though, because it's not like it's like a game and it can't change that much. But like anyone could put anything on Instagram. A little different. You know, but yeah, they can probably true. both be addicting. They for sure. Yeah. Social media probably okay. a tiny bit more addicting for most people. Yeah, yeah. especially with scrolling. Scrolling. Dude. DM scrolling, bro. Fuck Instagram, bro. Fuck it all, dude. Open AI Sora video. There's a. Yeah, you guys heard about you guys heard about Open AI, Open AI and Sora or what, dude? I'm familiar. Sora's there video generation tool and uh apparently there is a group of testers called pr puppets that shared uh online access to it via hugging face what was hugging face uh hugging face was like an ai platform or something um and the group accused OpenAI of exploiting 300 artists as unpaid testers and gatekeeping public sharing of their sora generated content claiming it served a $150 billion company's art washing efforts. OpenAI was like, it's all good, bro. And it was saying it's voluntary, no obligations for feedback. PR Puppets open letter criticized OpenAI for restricting Sora alpha outputs and excluding most artists from meaningful benefits while shaping the tool for public release. Um, so, basically people tried to say that OpenAI tested artists' stuff without paying them. But OpenAI was like, no, dude. Everybody uh, said it was A-OK. -okay. Thoughts and prayers? Hmm. I don't think they're ever going to get paid from these AI companies, so why even try? A little smart contract, little doohickeys, dude. I don't know. Like, what's in it for the, what's in it for the AI company? Uh, fair practice, I guess. Like, they already, like, everything they already, like, need, they already took. Uh, and then, like, the AI just, like, generates, like, from that, you know? It's like, if you give me a match, I can start the fire. Minimax and video tools announced by Google and Meta. You heard of Minimax before? Nah, what the fuck is that, though? Minimax AI video generator, Shanghai China. Oh, I think that's a Chinese one, and then some other models by Google and Meta. Minimax. I gotta find me a good video making tool. I gotta find me a good woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one that loves me. Hundred K followers in one year, easy. You say, John Ben? 
I mean, not easy. It takes work, but you gotta do the work. Like the formula is easy, just a shit ton of videos. This is true. But not like bad Bo videos. Both of you have experienced success via impressions on the TikTok platform. Yeah. Yes. You still you still post on TikTok, Shanley, don't you? I do, but I have this whole take on TikTok now where it used to be like when people were like, oh, um, I'm not, I don't want to post TikToks because like, I just, I feel cheesy doing them. My response was initially like, oh, like you don't want to play the game. Like this is, then you're not allowed to complain. Like you, this is what people are doing. This is the marketing platform. And like, you need to, like artists need to be adaptable. But now I'm kind of at this point where what I think is like, well, some, what someone told me recently was like, if your product or your art is not mainstream, the tactics don't have to be mainstream, you know? And like, if what you're selling is more niche, which a lot of, lot of people that I see on TikTok try to like make people like their shit, hoping that it like kind of pops off. But it seems like a lot of the times what I hear are like copycats, like niche artists, like they don't really have to market their shit in that in that way, you know, like the get ready with me's. I also like, you know, not, there's nothing sadder than seeing like someone who like really makes really dope shit, like start making those like videos with the text and them doing push ups, And then it's like 14 views. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you sold your soul for nothing, you know, like. <laughs> Like, but I can never listen to your music or like look at you as an artist the same way again because I saw you being willing to play the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's better, I think, as an artist to not participate in things you don't want to participate in because your time will come, you know? Like, well, question. Versus, well, what yeah. about like artists that we respect and look up to that use the platforms of their time to? Like maybe they didn't do it their whole career, but at least get started. Like the weekend with YouTube, Drake with MySpace. You know, like they were using like if TikTok were but, around back but then. But saying that, yeah, but like those are just it? like those are like normalized social media platforms at the time. You know, YouTube and it wasn't like a crazy like leap for them to. That wasn't like I don't attribute the success of musicians to MySpace. And I don't, when I think about that, I don't talk about Drake, you know, but it was like, at least to start the way to get your song heard. Okay. You know, sure. Like that. Yeah. I, I agree with that to a certain extent, but also like, I think like the weekend's a great example because he's someone that sure he used, utilized the platform, but the, the, the way he was marketing himself was not traditional, you know? And that's why it's dope. Like if there are videos of the weekend doing like YouTube cover videos of him, like with an acoustic guitar, I think the aura would not be there, you know? And yeah, that's, that's the equivalent true. Of, like you could put shit on TikTok and still not be playing like the TikTok music game, uh, you know? Quote unquote, cringy trends, like not doing a, yeah. a like a trend of the social the media that's going on right now and then yeah exactly so do you like, think like the trend of i'm not sure so like you mentioned like oh doing push-ups and doing text like I, I agree with you that's kind of corny but let's say you have a song and you're playing the game where you do a bunch of videos with the song in there like you're doing hundreds of videos the freaking and people, um, yeah let me find people, people follow you expecting like other music but you just keep Posting the same song because you're trying to push out this one song or your best. Yeah. You think your most mainstream sounding song. Is that like a good tactic? Like, or. Well, that's like what, that's what labels tell you to do, right? It's uh -huh. like the real marketing starts when the song comes out, you know, like, and it's just like kind of making your music the equivalent of like a commercial on someone's scrolling break, you know? Yeah. So what and, I did with you guys was, I don't know how to say this first thing no core and the villains but nx cre and they the, it's just like you see viral memes and then they slid their audio under it and they did probably hundreds of that yeah that's i mean the dude, there's so there's there's so many examples of people who play the game but this but that's what, i think what really yeah but you talk you talk about longevity you know like how long you stay in the game and it's like 
you either have something of substance or you have something of that's still just really part. just the thing that i was exactly exactly you, you can market like the best marketing is just like a really good product so if if you try to yeah a, a good product and maybe some people do it but then they use it and it's like okay well then this isn't gonna last uh, i think dope music has thing. yeah like dope music has dope aesthetics you know like dime a dozen music has dime a dozen aesthetics you know and like there's nothing wrong with being an artist that wants to like capitalize on the dime a dozen aspect in fact that's get yours and get gone type of type of a scenario you know like live your life but like for the people that really really love it it's like the aesthetic has to be a little bit deeper you know like it can't just be like you in a, in a way you know like i think tiktok is i think a lot of social media has there's such a capital on like especially now after post covid where it's like I see like celebrities posting like themselves in bed, like taking selfies, like po like posting like themselves getting ready before work. Like I didn't know what Jessica Al how what Jessica Alba's routine was. Mm. Like when I was reading People magazine, I got that like that information once a month, maybe you know, and like that was through an interviewer through an interviewer. So it was like there was a mystique there. Just like scary and I think what the city. Yeah, and I and I think like. Like when Kelly Clarkson makes those videos with no makeup on, and you're just like, ugh. The fuck? No, but it ruins the aura, man. Like it ruins it, the, the aura of it. And like my favorite artists are the ones that don't post on social media. It that does, much. dude. There's a th that's a thing with Kendrick, dude. Yeah. Like, Kendrick's a great mystique, example, bro. Dude. Yeah. Like fucking that fucking Drake's cool, but he's not mysterious, bro. He posts like all, no, everything. No, and, th and that's like on drag, man. Corny during that little uh, beef voice. He was posted on, like, yeah. on Instagram. And it's like, bro, you're just like a, now you're just a 38-year-old dude. Well, I yeah, okay, I think that was, I, I, I like that because I think he was trying to show that like, yo, this isn't bothering me. Even though I'm clearly losing, I'm going to continue to live my life. But we dude, should talk about the fucking, yeah. uh, sorry. Oh. Uh, after you say so what you're going to say, Sean, we should talk about the um, fucking lawsuit that he's throwing. Oh, my God, Universal? Yeah. I'm down. I mean, just real quick. So, like, my friend. So, Julian just recently did, like, an Amazon TV show, right? Mm -hmm. And when they did that, they did a AI deep dive into his, like, website digital footprint. Mm -hmm. And they, like, unearthed, like, a bunch of shit when he was in middle school, like, and this goofy shit he would say, you know, like, on Facebook and shit. And I'm like, that's the type of shit that like motherfuckers are on and that's why you want your fucking footprint to be mysterious to a certain extent so people are left wanting more but yeah the so I stopped the universal TikTok. lawsuit the universal lawsuit is crazy man because like he's presenting he's presenting a rico case bro with like do you know that like it's it's a rico case with the intention of a conglomerate to defame and a breach of contract in terms of like, I forget what the, ex there's like two two things that he's presenting in terms of a RICO case against this one person who's pushing these bots that's now reflective of all of universal music, man. Well, okay, so my from my understanding is he he's expecting this like large deal from Universal. Um, I think it's something like to the tune of like $500 million or more. And he feels as if they are trying to get out of the deal or try to pay him less and in order to do that they he feels that they are trying to make him less relevant through pumping the numbers of not like us calling him pedophile you know um <clears throat> but from a business standpoint that just doesn't make sense because drake is still their top selling artist so why would they try to jeopardize that you know like I would kind of, I would kind of see it. Like I don't believe it's artificially pumped up, but I would kind of see it from like a business standpoint. If Kendrick Lamar were like twenty four years old, sure, and he had more longevity, but he's fucking old, dude. He's like thirty six. So like, it's not like there's like a new up and coming artist that's trying to dethrone Drake here. Drake claims UMG and Spotify used bots, paid influencers, and favorable licensing <clears throat> to boost Lamar's diss track. So freaking just label marketing stuff, but the licensing thing was kind of the most interesting thing because it says UMG allegedly charged Spotify a 30% lower fee for the song in exchange for heavy promotion. 
So they made a cheaper deal for Kendrick song <laughs> while like everything else was at a higher price in all of music history. Well, that's not like <clears throat> wrong, right? Like they it, give it, but it like he, devalues Drake versus Kendrick. And it's like, why would you, why would you give cheap Kendrick tracks? Why would you I would them? argue that it doesn't devalue. I mean, kind of in the public perception, but I know a lot of people that wouldn't normally listen to Drake that started listening to Drake because of the beef. You know, so yeah. Dude, let's also think both. about let's also think about like how that song came out. It wasn't through a traditional means of putting a song out. It like so and the end of it hitting the fucking DSPs was fucking expedited super quickly, you know. So I could definitely see some sort of back, backdoor deal going on there, you know. Like, was that the one that dropped on YouTube first? Yeah, that dropped on YouTube. Oh yeah, and, and then, then later it was on streaming. Yeah, like two days later, which is pretty fast. And then I, if you hear about how fast these songs were made in responses to each other, then like you know that like there was no time frame of release being given provided to the label. You know, like, it was just like to me, yeah. I think it's almost like Universal playing catch up. You know, on like the release. Well, it definitely seems like because especially with GNX, it seems like yeah. Kendrick just dropped and like no one knew about yeah. it because even on Apple Music, there was no lyrics, there was no description, there was no marketing yeah. on their homepage for at least like. 48 hours so but like, they have to listen to Kendrick it to Lamar, themselves yeah well dude i also like really like what universal said where they're like maybe the fans just still get to choose the music <laughs> this day and age like that's kind of a hilarious thing for a corporate like entity to say but um maybe they're right dude maybe but it, think about, like, it was the song of the but, summer yeah but think about what kendrick lamar puts like kendrick lamar's con contractual obligations are to pg lang right which is a subsidiary oh, under, under Interscope Universal. Records, which is under Universal. But what I'm saying is, like, because he is his own boss on his own label in that regard, like, there's not a lot of red tape he has to go through besides, like, just the presentation he gives to, like, the final guy, you know, who's already approved him to have his own, like, department in this bigger corporation, you know? Yeah, and I have no doubt Drake has the same or had the same, um, like, royalty of being able to be yeah. like hey, here's my album just put it out right now fuck it you know like the executives can listen to it tomorrow but i want it out now <clears throat> dude you also like drake's you think about drake and like when drake puts out an album that he wants to put out he calls it a mixtape and when drake puts out an album that is in a bl obligation to his label he calls it an album and that was like kind of mind-blowing of a loophole that he that people were doing in the 2000s you know in the 2010s yeah and, but now now it's completely <laughs> bypassed where it's like like kendrick put out a song on his instagram as a video like an instagram reel you know like and it's just there's so much just people scrambling to like get shit i i've always been on the on the side of like i don't think the kendrick and drake thing was so much of a musical conspiracy because there's no monetary incentive for the universal to like have either of lose two of its highest sources of revenue uh -huh. and like you can listen to both oh well, i yeah, saw this exactly. uh this conspiracy tying it to um comparing it to michael jackson where he was trying to get out or get the masters for his music and he was feuding with the head of sony and so Sony like whipped up this whole Michael Jackson is a pedophile marketing campaign. And so the, this person was like, that's what happened to Drake. He's trying to get out of his deal, get his masters. And so they're pumping this Drake is a pedophile thing. And it's like the same thing over and over again. I was like, okay, that's that. Kind it's of the Illuminati, sense. Illuminati defamation conspiracy theory that was going around during George Bush. Or it's like, you have, the the classic example of like celebrities that go up, they get too powerful, and then they like have a pub a situation of public embarrassment where they fall off, right? Mm -hmm. And then cancel cancel culture kind of was like, no, actually, this is just <clears throat> we like it was just the people. It's not an ins insider conspiracy. We just get bored of people, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, then let's take a ten minute break that no one listening or watching will see, but we have to because we're congrat contractually obligated by Lucian. Yes. Brought to you by LegalZoom. 
Nah, Greg definitely right touched those kids, man. <laughs> Whoa, dude, you can't you have to say allegedly. Oh, I was one. Well, those views. Don't, don't <laughs> I was there. Yeah. I was at the. I was <laughs> there. The this is Giddy party. Have you heard of a drizzy party? <laughs> Trick. Sean Lee back at it, killing wow. the game. Sean Lee. Thank you, thank you. Thanksgiving edition of Rick and Bond. We brought more friends, and we brought more families. My wife's pregnant. Thank oh, you, thank you. Congrats. We Congrats, man. Say goodbye to the podcast. Say goodbye to every single thing you've <laughs> ever loved. Congrats we, for nutty and your wife. Dude. We adopted. Nice. I haven't had sex with her yet. Oh, I got it. <laughs> One day, maybe. Hey, you're, hey, you're welcome. What? What? <laughs> you adopted. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. It's not black, so I don't know why you winked at the camera. It's not born yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was born. I said pregnant. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Uh, clip <laughs> here's winning or what? Um, would you would you be more offended or less offended if your baby came out and you had a Chinese baby? Chinese, like your Chinese wife, baby. your wife cheated cheated on you with a Chinese man. I kill myself. Well, that would probably mean <laughs> that this man is shorter than I, like a lot shorter. If we're talking, so you'll raise it, you'll raise this child as one of your own. The law of averages. I mean. It would be a cool experiment. You can get a kid into Harvard. It's actually Indian people are giving more people to the United States colleges versus. Is it really China an accomplishment if your adopted kid gets into Harvard? I mean, you want it. <laughs> you, you <laughs> it's want it's it. not your blood. It's not your blood in Harvard. You it, but you want it in the adoption raffle that everybody plays when they put in their name in the hat and they say, "These are the smartest babies coming out of the lab." Amen. I got Amen, sister. Two Let's more news this. items. Do you guys want to talk about Bitcoin infused real estate loans or a lawsuit against BlackRock Vanguard and State Street for being freaking woke, dude? Uh, let's talk about the next, the last one you said. Pretty funny. BlackRock. BlackRock just bought Jersey Mike's. <laughs> they did. Really? <laughs> and they, yeah. Dude, BlackRock. Uh, why are you so excited about BlackRock buying Jersey Mike's? I'm not excited, but I was, eating weird... Jersey, uh, I was eating Jersey Mike's yesterday, and I was like, I wonder yeah. who owns this. Ah, uh, yeah. Black Rock. Rock bought it. Yeah. Well, good purchase on that. Jersey Mike's is fucking delicious, first of all. It, it is. That... And let's get into it. Why don't we? I just hope they the don't Black... turn it into Subway, bro. Like, I was going to say, BlackRock's whole thing is they take the, the company apart, they sell the company for profit, right? And they bro, like, oh. They might keep it, but they're probably franchise the fuck out of it so the quality of the food will go down we're about like to get a jersey mike's like um sandwich grocery store hey yeah. there's lots of good sandwich places but you know jersey mike's, mike's is good. The, uh, yeah. the, on the outside it doesn't seem like it's a good sub am i wrong or am i right no have it's been, good have man. you been there on the outside but once you get inside oh uh, yeah I remember we used to live up the street from a Jersey Mike's. And I, and I frequented it. And a Whole Foods. I didn't take advantage of that Whole Foods as much as I should have. Man, that was a, you know, food and food right there. Yeah. Great times. Yeah. Tucson. Uh, so, Sean Lee, you ever went to Tucson? You went like once, right? Yeah, I came once. Well, I've been, I've been a few times since you guys left. Right, right, right. Probably yeah. more than us. We got to go back. I got to <laughs> gotta get out there. Dude, like I said on one podcast, gotta hear ESPN does a college game day where they have people go and like they do a show at the at the, at the the football game. They did it in Berkeley, and they're probably going to do it at U of A. And when they do it at U of A, I'm for sure going to take a train out there. And Dude, the train right there is fun, man. <laughs> Bro, please love yourself. I'm taking a plane. <laughs> Fuck that, dude. That train sucks. Plane, dude. I love I love a Tucson plane, dude. A little a little plane ride to Tucson. Dude. A little it's like a thirty minute airport, flight. Dude. You're like, wow, the ground has become red and just covered and just nothing, man. Right. The yeah. train takes longer than driving, bro. <laughs> yeah, the train's like sixteen hours, or like twelve hours. You know? Yeah, I was like ten, but driving is seven. Flying is like one. Blackstone. I don't know. Can we say that in twenty twenty four? Amer- African American stone. African American stone, African American run by the white, run by white, which uh, who is white man? Yeah, uh, the CEO of Blackstone since 1985 is Stephen A. Schwartzman. Everybody, oh damn, he's a Stevie. Did he start it? 
he might have. It says 85, and I wouldn't be surprised. He did, in fact, establish it in 1985 with Peter G. Peterson. <laughs> Nothing like Peter Peterson, dude. I mean... So what do you do? Just start an LLC and buy stock? Uh, no, you buy companies. Bro, he looks great for 77, man. He's uh, 77? Yeah, 1947. He was born two years after World War II ended. <laughs> I mean, most 77-year-olds, unless you're pretty bad, it's not like they're looking like skeletons, you know? I'm sure being a billionaire helps, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he's got Maybe. some stress on him. Oh, uh, just a $55 billion? That's chill. Uh, he was a, it. a former strategic and policy forum for Mr. Trumpito. Let's see how I'm on old Wikipedia he was. too. Um, he was 37 when he started Blackstone. Guys, there's still time. We just need 400 grand of our own <laughs> money. Grand. Uh, it would be interesting to. I'll, I'll do a GPT once you guys are talking. But Blackstone, Blackstone uh, buys Jersey Mike's for an eight billion dollars. It's the why second, though is the real the question. Second, it's a good question. Great question. Second good business. Second largest sandwich chain in the U.S. Valued at $8 billion, including debt. Expected completed in tw early 2025. Includes an earn out agreement tied to the opening of Jersey's Mike, Mike's 4,000th location. I don't know what earn out agreement means. Uh, Jersey Mike was founded in 1956. Franchised in 87 under CEO Pete Urkankoro. 3,000 plus locations, plans for more domestic and international. Nothing like going to China and get a Jersey Mike's, dude. <laughs> a little taste of home. <laughs> I think I, earn out means that um, once they uh, open... Like a like a, like a uh, uh, Kevin O'Leary kind of deal? Yeah, then they, get the, then they give them the rest of the money or something like that. Okay. But damn, okay, um, please don't ruin Jersey Mike's. You know, I got a couple backup sandwich places. But Jersey Mike's, it's a national treasure. Subway sucks. Dude, I, Subway does suck. I just, I just went down the rabbit hole real quick yesterday of um, the history of Quiznos and why it has pretty much gone under. And it's like this, Quiznos did this weird thing where for a minute they were on top because they were the only sandwich chain that was toasting their sandwiches. And then Subway did the $5 foot long, which was a crazy fucking marketing thing. But Quiznos is still like on the champ for hot sandwiches. And then what happened was Quiznos corporate decided to, if I get this right, they wanted to create a gross, like a grocery wholesale business. They wanted to convert all of their franchisees eventually into a self-sustaining business where they provide their own farming and groceries from Quiznos corporate. But so like they made it so all the franchise owners had to buy like vegetables and supplies from Quiznos, but like instead of like it being like thirty cents for a tomato, it'd be like a dollar twenty five for a tomato. Wait, so they and had like to buy these... from Quiznos. Quiznos? Yeah, the supply from Quiznos right, corporate. Buy Quiznos, Quiznos stuff. Yeah. Why did they and, do um, that? Because <laughs> Quiznos wanted to become the self sufficient. Oh, not just a sandwich place, but this like <clears throat> kind of grocery distribution, you know, like produce distribution. So they're trying to be like if, um, in and out, but in and out doesn't charge their restaurants for <laughs> supplies. No, but like in and out is a successful <laughs> business model on a small scale, you know, like a smaller yeah. scale, you know. I remember Subway after Quiznos was starting to pick up steam, Subway started toasting their sandwiches, and then yeah. I remember fucking subway started slicing their meat when you order it just like jersey mike's that's jersey right Mike been freaking you know under the i really didn't it's more of an east coast thing is it not i think it's from new jersey yeah or isn't it does it I, I feel like it has more things east coast than west coast what the sandwich i think what? jersey mike's is pretty spread out like it's pretty evenly spread but, no pun <laughs> intended you know but jersey mike map um i never really went into one until tucson yeah I uh, work across get the street way. from one now. Uh, yeah, I gotta get a, Mike's Way Dry though, dude. I can't do that oil and vinegar, man. That should be Mike's Way Dry. Dude. What is that? That's where you do it without the oil and vinegar. Just That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, bro. Like the what? And then they put salt and pepper the on salt, it. Salt, the lettuce, tomato, onions. 
so dude the popping. that's the signature you, that's why you gotta eat it fast you can't be saving it for later <laughs> no you do. I know. I do. what do you get at jersey vice what is your jersey vice i forgot what i got i, I like the club sub mike sway the club sub's good they does, also have a good the club sub by your place put avocado yeah, on it um i think or i think guacamole you gotta ask. Spread? Nah, but yeah, I the think one by mine doesn't do it i think they used yeah. to do it but they don't do it anymore oh is that um, what it is okay yeah, because now, Dude, they, now you jog my memory. I used to have it for sure. Yeah. Their sandwiches are also kind of small, too. But, yeah. dude, a Jersey Mike sandwich will get me more full than a Subway sandwich. Right. Yeah, a Subway sandwich will yeah. get me fucking hemorrhoids, bro. Their bread is made out of fucking Yoga mats. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's yeah, so mad. fucked up, dude. You know they're the biggest um, franchise in the world. So Really? Yeah, was more than... 2023 by another private equity firm called Rourke Capital for nine point five five billion. So yeah. Damn. Probably eight versus nine. Wait, uh, what? Jersey Subway. Mike's? Subway is nine. Subway was bought? Yeah. Twenty twenty. So you're telling me Jersey Mike's is worth almost as much as Subway. Yeah, it's the second I mean, a billion less is, is like considerably less though, yeah. Yeah, but I thought I thought Subway being the biggest franchise in the world would be worth like sixty billion compared to Jersey Mike's. Jersey's eight. Jersey, like, Jersey and I didn't think Jersey, I know Jersey Mike's was popular, but like, so it has a bunch on the East Coast. It's a, a bunch coastal. Um, yeah, four thousand locations. Uh, P just buying a bunch of freaking sandwich places. Um, Blackstone has one point one trillion in assets and is trying to grow more franchises. They also bought Seven Brew Coffee and Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Does that ring any never, bells? Never heard of it. Yeah. Um, also, ever been to Firehouse oh, Subs? Bro. I have not, been dude. There. Firehouse Subs to me is like a fever dream. I've been there once on a vacation, like a road trip when I was a kid, and then I've only seen the frozen ones. But holy shit, like that's like an actual restaurant. Yeah, there's one downtown. What the fuck? That's what about trip. Togo's? Togo's is good, but you can't see them make the sandwich, which is kind of weird. They kind of just like it was not good. It. Yeah, they like make it. In secret, and then they like hand it to you. And it's really, qu- it's always really quiet in the Togos. Yeah, they closed the one in Pasadena, yeah. unfortunately. Dude, what about um? Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember um? Todai, the seafood re- buffet. Nah, never heard of it. At the mall. Okay, never mind. At the mall, no. What's like, last time we went to San Anita Mall? Um, I dude, went somewhat recently. Uh, but I went early morning. Are you joking me? You're not no. even from here. <laughs> oh, I thought you said San Diego. Oh. <laughs> uh. What did you say? I said Santa Anita Mall, which is a mall Anita. in LA. No, I, I went bro, recently, I went bro. There. It's popping, dude. Yeah, It's huge, man. They, they've expanded. It's like a fucking octopus, man. It's expanded. I thought malls were dead, but this one is not. Think, again, probably private equity is buying a bunch of them. Yeah, that's yeah. I looked it up actually. That's what happened. Uh, kind of, I kind of miss kicking it at the mall though, man. Like when we were kids, let's like, go back, dude. Nothing like a couple 30 year olds at the back, mall, dude. Let's go to fucking uh, Tom. What's it called? Dave and Buster's. I, Dave and Buster's. Little Drake, little Drake and Diddy play date at the mall. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Tom and Jerry's. Uh, Blackstone also bought uh, a four billion dollar mall deal in New York. For uh, the Westfield, is it? <laughs> is this San Diego? Yeah, it is, huh? No, ROIC. Blackstone acquires Retail Opportunity Investments Corp. I was I was reading another thing that had corporation in its name, and having corporation in your name as a company is just really funny, and I like it. Aren't they like the first or second largest shareholder of Apple? Blackstone. Yeah. Probably BlackRock is. Oh, Blackstone is is uh, private equity that buys all the stuff, but I'm sure oh. Blackstone gets in in there. We'll see. I thought they were the same thing. No, BlackRock, Blackstone, Blackstone. I stand corrected. Blackstone more real estate. Blackstone more more private equity. I'm starting Black Pebble. <laughs> uh, I I do think there is a funny story behind the rock and the in the stone. That's fucked up, dude. They're just copying each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not Blackstone. It's BlackRock and Vanguard. Oh my! God. Which, uh, if I if I could do a quick segue, and then we can talk about other fun stuff. Uh, Republican people, including uh, 
Texas <laughs> and other states, people. you people, uh, put a lawsuit against BlackRock and Vanguard and Straight Street, with their, which are uh, the top three U.S. asset managers, uh, because they are alleging that they're participating in initiatives uh, that are freaking climatey and woke, says these people, uh, to influence coal industry output reductions, artificial supply constraints, and higher energy prices on coal market profits uh, for, like, ESG stuff. A lot of these companies have a uh, little climate mandate, so they're doing more non-oil and non-coal stuff. And apparently this is putting up prices for coal, and all these states are like, yo, this is how we make all our money. Stop it. But oil, where it's at. Oil is where it's at. Um, That's how I get around, dude. Withdrew $8.5 billion from BlackRock earlier this year because alleged discrimination against oil and gas companies. And then uh, all the asset firms are like, hey, man, we're just trying to maximize profits here. And then some antitrust stuff. Is it, it's, yeah. What? Isn't it kind of crazy how, like, now the Democratic Party is associated with, like, the political machine and, like... Yeah, they kind of switch. The, um, the corporation, uh -huh. yeah, they, like... Because, like, to me, that, like, them suing three major fucking corporations that have been kind of visibly funding, like, American politics for, like, the past decade. Yeah. It's, like, it's just performative anti-corporation shit. It's, like, the same when, like, the left-wingers, like, sued corporations for, like, not for violating environmental rights. And then, but, like, a few, like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it aligned with the values of the party. Yeah, I think it kind it's of strange. Who's in office, dude. But like, yeah, these still Republican people being like anti. I mean, both sides, just depending on who's the establishment at the time. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's a weird switch, man. Like, I'm against whoever's in power. Yeah, it's really <laughs> like. Uh, I mean, that is definitely an ideology that uh, I'm sure folks in Tucson had that I knew. I used to be anti Biden. Now I'm anti Trump. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to know this, but. Yeah, Texas was like, dude, you guys are too freaking ESG. We're going to take out some money from BlackRock specifically. And then antitrust stuff. Uh, broader implications include to use the antitrust tools by populist Republicans to address social and political issues beyond traditional regulatory methods. Basically, they're like, yo, dude, you're effing our coal stuff in the A, and uh, we like it, brothers. So then you get the lawyers like Drake to whip up some kind of argument come on trick that's like the most like <laughs> getting the, bro's doing everything we're getting in the studio there's an image i Dr saw drake moved to texas and the, sue universal right right texas right. is suing did he really but yeah drake with the oh, houston oh did he yeah that's like the texas big thing where it's at did. dude interesting that's very interesting it's oh, a very yeah. interesting move bro dude i just saw this movie civil war and it's about like and if like, like it's the United, but it's pretty much Texas and California yeah. link up against the rest of the country, and they win because the they're just, they're just, yeah, they just have almost the entirety <laughs> of the GDP in like two fucking spots. It's crazy, man. The, the That's scene, cool. I'm down. The scene with the guy from Breaking Bad, in the, the yeah, table. yeah, where he's like with the girl like in the bodies. He's like, ah! that, that dude, dude, that, that dude looks like a fucking um. We have Matt Damon at home. Yeah, sure. Like, knock off Timu Matt Damon, bro. He's really good. I like him as an actor. He's really good. I just saw Kinds of Kings of Kindness, and he's in that. And he's like, he does look. Megalopolis, Sean Lee? No, I have not, man. The Francis wow. Ford Coppola <laughs> uh, masterpiece. You got to watch Cop You got to watch Coppola's newest uh, passion project on your laptop. I wanted, to, I wanted to see it in theaters. No I lie, because like, like if it. you want to see someone flop, you want to see them flop like <laughs> I, on the big screen, I not saw, like on your TV. I saw them flop with a freaking. There was ads in the middle of this <laughs> of this bootleg, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was everything I wanted it to be, dude. It got like an eight two on my movie scale. I don't watch hella movies. Uh, Uncut Gems is up there. The Giver's up there. 
The Giver. Bro, uncut Gems is not that good, bro. Uncut Gems, <laughs> listen, I don't watch the Uncut movies. Gems and The Giver are the best movies you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, you guys want to see my list? The Giver, the Giver is like a children's movie, bro. First of all, I don't remember it. I'm reading The Giver again right now. The first time I read it since middle school. Uh, remember all my Netflix, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Really, oh, yeah. Where the wild things are, the cat in the house, with Mike Myers. I don't really um, know. How the Grinch stole Christmas. <laughs> Shrek 2. Yeah, Shrek 2. Shrek. No, Shrek to third. Uh, I, I don't really know if I actually saw The Giver of the movie, but I, I like the idea of the, the, the book, so I just say. But it's your like favorite it. movie, and you've never seen it. Uh, like someone. You like the idea of like a a kid being trained to like take on all the trauma of an entire <laughs> like civilization. Yeah, well, the, and well, just the, like the and then they kidnap a dude. baby every every hundred years. <laughs> so backwards, great, bro. Dude. <laughs> nah, dude, I like Amer- I like America because it's like you got to deal with your own problems. You know, like there's <laughs> so much individualism. That's what he's that's what he's freaking getting downloaded into his head, dude. It's great. So I sent you guys my movie list of what I remember. It's pretty chronological. It goes trapped. Did you see Trap yet, Sean Lee? House of Gucci. Star Wars 10? <laughs> <laughs> Tra- Dude, okay. Let's go chronological. This is what my Roku suggests to me as like a Saturday night in is like these movies, bro. Like just bro. released on Tubi. Yeah, we, don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have Tubi, bro. Most yeah. recently, we saw Trap. I, I rented it on Apple TV. I gave it a 7-8. I like. it. I was it. trying to watch Trap when I was on Hulu, but I just like could not bring myself. And then I recently have come to want to watch it, so don't ruin it for me. Yeah, I've I, seen House of Gucci. That's a, the 7-8. You, 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 not great. You I didn't get, you didn't get, you didn't get Letterboxd, man, and like write reviews on all of this. Out of all the story, Star Wars movies, you picked this one. <laughs> Star Wars, I see. I've, I've seen another the one. return of Rain John or uh, so, JJ Abrams to the franchise. We got Trap in order. So, most recent Trap, then Megalopolis, and then Star Wars in LA in like 2019. <laughs> House of Gucci uh, playing on 2X without any volume. So, I was just reading captions. <laughs> This uh, is my girls don't talk to you, man. <laughs> they love this this listing precisely. Love, what? love this. Or <laughs> like, it's so different, dude. I feel like I could show you anything and you would put it on this list. What do you mean? <laughs> if I saw it. Yeah, if I saw this it. Is this, the this, is the bar, this is the bar, dude. <laughs> this is, like, these are movies I've seen that the, I remember. So the bar is if you've seen it, it's on the list. Well, <laughs> no. The, the, I, the, the ratings are under the movie and these are just movies, all the movies I've seen. In the past okay 10 years, so. <laughs> you've so, only seen spot six movies I, one two three four five six I, okay i've also okay. nothing's younger than nothing's older than 2014 good reminder good reminder i saw it inside out too i liked it the oh, second yeah. one or the first one i've only seen the second one inside out uh, inside out number two bro the first one i saw in the play i was crying bro like i was, I was like i don't even know why but i was like on the place like dark or what inside out two I saw, uh, actually, I saw uh, another um, Shyamalan, the the cabin in the woods or whatever. Oh, that's not Shyamalan, but that's a good one. It's a no, it twist. is. It's not cabin in the. Is woods. it Shyamalan? The the most uh, recent one. The vill- the the village. Let me see. The cabin. It might just be called. Oh, so, the cabin. Knock. I don't think I've seen that one. Not knock at the cabin. Is it? Yeah, it's knock at the cabin. I haven't seen uh, that with Batista in it. It it was. Eh. I would I would put trap above it, um, some other stuff. But yeah, thanks for reminding me. And uh, and then uncut gems. That's an eight two right now. It's at the top of my list. And then the giver, Dude. which does not have a score because I don't remember it. Which I went to go funny. see. Dead. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Deadpool. Deadpool. Okay, just real quick. I want to go see Deadpool and Wolverine, and every single trailer was either a remake or a sequel. Yeah. And they did trailers for, no lie, like forty minutes. They did trailers because I I was uh, I go on a a online and it's like oh dude all the movies are remakes and and sequels and I was like oh they got they get the, the person said well like what's up with that I was like oh really did you see Megalopolis Megalopolis <laughs> freaking the newest movie you could ever think of because the movies, cause the movie industry is dying and remakes and sequels are the only things that make money right it's proven 
why like, Pixar and Disney. Billion in the hole, dude. Nah, bro. I just saw this movie, The Creator, with Denzel's kid. And that was a dope-ass sci-fi movie. But how much did it make? It was probably awesome. But it probably barely, like, made what it, they spent to make it. The Creator. What is that? Uh, box office? 20 mil budget was eight. Box office was 104. Like... I think like, I saw a trailer for that. Yeah. I kind of wanted to see it. There's also other... There's It's basically things that... Like, I saw Trap on YouTube commercials a lot, and that's what got me. And then there was another one with the, the actor who played uh, Zuckerberg in whatever that Facebook movie was. Yeah, Jesse Eisenberg. And it's basically just like a dude rom-com thing, and I'm pretty interested in that as well. And I, I, it's really toned in on my, my sick niche movie take. I'm a... I'm a huge, I'm a huge defender of art and acting and writing, but this industry is gonna be so AI'd out. It's gonna like, they're gonna cut every cost they can to try to save this dying industry. It's down ten well, percent this year as a whole. Why is Ariana Grande crying in every PR interview for The Wicked? Tell me this. Because she, because she killed Mac, dude. <laughs> it's finally catching up with her, bro. You can see it in her face. Have you guys the guild, dude? Nah, I refuse what? to watch anything associated with, with we're, we're that movie. We're talking about social media, and if you watch it for more than six seconds, it's been feeding you. And today alone, I, I watched these Ariana Grande and her co-star uh, hey. doing these interviews for for movies, and it's just they they cry every time, dude. They, I kind of want to see the movie. It's a mo. I'm good off of it. I like plays. You like the way? Is it is it like oh this is the role that I've wanted to play my whole life it type thing? And it, and it was Ariana okay Grande that's years sweet. and years ago, and she even like got teary eyed when she like oh my god I would love to play Wicked because that's like some, that's like that theater theater girls like is dream it? Movie. yeah yeah, yeah like, it's like, that's like the most popular fucking <laughs> yeah. Broadway play in history I think yeah she's like I would that's that's like, this long I would do movie. anything to play Wicked he was she was I would, I would <laughs> dance with coffee every day. Shoot. Damn! Oh, apparently it already yeah. smashed at the box office. Yeah, what was it? Did Gladiator do good or no? I don't know. Did Gladiator come out? Yeah, I think it's already out. It was a. I want to see that too. I, I was a little, a little bit intrigued on it, but I probably won't um, pull the trigger. <laughs> what? <laughs> you see, Denzel Washington said, "Oh yeah, I." When I was filming Gladiator 2, I kissed a man in the film, but they were too pussy to I mean, keep it in. Like, and everyone was like, you didn't have to tell us that, Unc. <laughs> you could have kept that to yourself. I mean, I, I mean, I'd probably be a little, like, oh, if, no. if you had to really, like, work yourself up, dude, like, all right, lots of kissing, dude, you know, actor, that's what I do. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we cut that dude kissing scene. I'm like, bleh. Like, I had to, I had to, like, you know, pretend to, pretend to be a gay gladiator, bro. Was he pretending? Yeah, you know. I don't know. Is is so, movie, bro. but what is the movie a sequel to? Like that, the everyone dies in the first one. <laughs> I haven't seen the first. Like one. what? Maybe dies? it's fresh characters. Then why don't they just? Okay, so they're just like it's. So it's a Roman movie. So it's Gladiator Two. Is that what it is? I think so. I don't know. To be honest, I haven't seen the first one. Budget know. was two ten to three ten million, and box office was two three two. Uh, so Dude, I I saw Napoleon. And then I saw Romulus, and those are the past two movies Ridley Scott has done, and I've been pretty like not happy with both of those movies. <laughs> Bro, man. Napoleon bored me to death. Oh no, dude! And it's weird that everyone else has a French accent, and Napoleon is just talking in a like an American accent. <laughs> yeah, like, fucking Joaquin time. Phoenix has been dropping the ball lately. Yeah, dude, he's not. <clears throat> Anyone um, see like Joker? A... It's actually been named the worst film in American cinematic history. The second this... one, yeah. Did you, did you guys see the first one? First one's okay. It's I didn't no... like the first one. You didn't, but it's but it's just because I, I I like Joker with Batman. You know, so there's no <laughs> Batman, so I'm like not really interested in the character of the Joker. You can't, yeah, you can't beat. You also can't beat that performance. Yeah. Have you guys seen I'm Still Here with Joaquin Phoenix? No. no. It is so like it, after Gladiator 1 came out, Joaquin Phoenix won like Best Supporting Actor and then he like quit acting, went on interviews and was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to become a rapper and like like would do like <laughs> go to like strip clubs and like like just bomb, like just do a bunch of drugs with hookers. Like, he'd be caught on TMZ with like hanging out with Puff Daddy and shit. And it turned and everyone like would like do these like 
Like there'd be like TV shows where they're like, what happened to Joaquin Phoenix after the death of his brother? Like all that shit. And it turns out that him and Casey Affleck, who is his brother-in-law, had been working on this documentary movie where they're like studying the fall off of an actor. <laughs> and, they're, and Joaquin was just like, dude, I'll just quit my career and we can just like film in a real time. Cool. And it came out and it was just like this fucking hilarious like what is it fuck you to like it's called i'm still here uh -huh. and like the entire movie is like them trying to like get joaquin phoenix signed as a rapper to p, <laughs> p. diddy oh god and, and no one wants like wants him around and um documentary musical parody film directed by affleck Dude. fantastic movie really interesting it's like in the day of social media and celebrity like that's a really interesting movie 626,000 box office it's nothing you I hear that Joaquin was Phoenix was supposed to fucking um, star in this movie about that was supposed to be this really graphic gay love story and a whole bunch of movie was spent on the budget on like locations and like saying crew and they were and he like pulled out like 24 hours before <laughs> no pun intended damn who they get to play play that guy instead dude i don't know i think it's canceled i'm not sure because he I like mean, dude, wrote the, he like wrote the movie like he was like, in charge <laughs> of it and he was like yeah nah i'm not really feeling this gay shit anymore that's a troll <laughs> shit bro. that's a rich people when you're so rich that you just want to like you're just bored, you know, he's gonna fuck up some the lives of other people real quick. Yeah. I'd rather focus my creative energy on the Joker too. Some sexual what? harassment allegations on this I'm still here movie according to Wikipedia. Yeah, because there's like them with a bunch of hookers <laughs> and like he makes them do Wikipedia. like weird yeah, and like they film without without consent. It's a weird movie. It's a it's a pretty fucking gonzo ass movie, man. Oh, you you'd like it, man. That's Amanda real filmmaking right there. Look guerrilla the, filmmaking. The I thought art was yeah. art. Real ass shit. It's the guerrilla market over down there at USC, dude. What happened to the days we used to just grab the camera, <laughs> fucking go out <laughs> and just doing? shoot for the love of it, you know? That's what this What happened is? to USC, man? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Ever since Dr. Dre bought that building, dude. Yeah, dude. Inglewood used to be a nice place. Yeah, dude. That's what I keep saying. The Olympics are about to come to LA. Oh my goodness! And, and Englewood's about to get really nice and then really, really <laughs> shitty. Well, th I mean, that's what usually happens with the Olympic places, right? Yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll be okay after. I don't think we have the infrastructure for it, and I'm talking about public transportation. Well, I'm talking about the after part, where usually people like pop up stadiums and then they become wastelands. Oh yeah, it's gonna be awful. Oh, it has into it and freaking they'll, they'll go play at UC Santa Cruz or something. UC Santa Cruz? <laughs> yeah, dude, these, they have all these freaking like uh, oh, perimeter places. Nah, <laughs> we're staying at the Coliseum. They like the furries yeah, were going so in downtown. Fly. You think the shop so, owners are going to go in into it? No, nah, they're going to be at the, they're going to be somewhere. They're probably going to be at the Coliseum. Pasadena. But the Coliseum's small, dude. Low key. There's also the Rose Bowl. In Pasadena. Also, um, the weekend's playing at the Rose Bowl, January twenty fifth. Tickets go on sale December second. I'm going. Mm. Mm. It's gonna be awesome. Wait, wait, what? The weekend's playing at the Rose Bowl, January twenty fifth. Oh, I saw that. Mm. I'm good, dude. Oh, okay, you know what? <laughs> hey, hey. Fuck you! <laughs> how much? How much are tickets? How much are tickets? Like a thousand dollars? They're gonna be like, a lot. Lie, a hey, they're gonna be a lot. They don't worry about that. It's the experience. No tickets on Monday, December second. It's it's you you know you're not going to a show where a rapper's gonna be like singing <laughs> over his own track. You know, you know it's gonna be experience. The, but the thing with the weekend's voice is it he naturally sounds like he has auto tune, so it already sounds like he's singing to a track even. It, it, you know what I mean? The live clips I've seen, they're always like, eh, his voice. When I saw him at Coachella, best show I've ever seen, ever. Like, he came That's ready crazy, to work. man. And I've seen him enough times to know that sometimes he has bad shows, but that show was crazy. I'm going to have to get a pit, dude. I can't sit in a seat. Long. I saw him You can't afford Coachella that too, shit, dude. You can't afford a pit. Don't even, don't even think like that. Just be in the, the stadium. Drink, the, the drinking game for Weekend Live is whenever he goes, hey, <laughs> huh, huh. 
He always does that shit. Oh, dude. you're like, blacking I, out. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to. I'll black out. Uh, I've never been in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, it's but, right. Like, like never even like been around there. Pasadena, dude. Yeah, I don't think I've been to Pas. Maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. Pasadena is nice. It's they're nice, man. they're starting to get serious about like concerts there. Uh-huh. They used to never do concerts there. Yeah, I remember when I mean, when U two came and Fergie opened for them, and that was like the biggest thing that happened the entire time I lived there. Yeah, and then they did like nothing like they, for like ten years, and then Jay Z did yeah. a show there. They, oh yeah, that's right with Beyonce. But now they have like festivals there. That's the real shit. Trying to make some money, dude. The weekend. Hurry up tomorrow for a one night only Rose Bowl Stadium. I will be there. And is the album out at this point? I think it's the day after the album. That doesn't give me time. It gives me plenty of time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know all the words by heart. Hotels in. Oh, I might do a Pasadena hotel. The Marriott, man. Damn, you got weekend ticket money and hotel money? <laughs> no. Hey, no, I never said I got weekend ticket money. You oh, right you're talking now, to him. My cash flow yeah. isn't exactly what it used to be right now, so. It's uh, rough for all of us, but it's the weekend. One night only. <laughs> I mean, it is the weekend, dude. Hey, keep in mind, he, he's saying he's retiring, so you never that's know. That's what I'm this... saying. The last weekend build show, that's kind of what I'm baiting for. This could very easily have been in fucking you, Miami. You know damn well he's not retiring, bro. Well, as, as the build as the weekend. He's going to the to a bell, dude. Everybody. Oh, that's right. I hope he doesn't, dude. That's so lame, bro. Just fucking stay the weekend, dude. I'm okay with it. Gam- it's like, that's like Gambino. <laughs> like, in, in Donald Glover and all these interviews are like, I put the Gambino character to death. Like, I, I, don't, I hate it. And then I look at his music of it. All of it's still under Childish Gambino, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is, I thought you killed this guy like four albums ago. There ain't no music under Donald Glover. It's all Childish Gambino. That's why you you should never say I'm retiring because you never know what inspiration strikes. But if he, if he went... Well, like, if he goes to Abel as a name, would you still type in the weekend? I mean, I would. I would, if, like you just said, out of out of to respect the hustle, I would. I would need it to be billed as Abel. It's like Kanye is yay, right? And the well, what's the like, benefit hey, to that? Is the music going to change? He's well, still going to talk nothing, about fucking, nothing changes. Yeah, he's well, still talk about drugs and sex and shit. It may be a little bit different. It's just like eras, dude. I'm like, you have you have, it probably gets gets him off his contract. Ah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's that uh, deep. Because he has his own label. It's, there's always stuff underneath, dude. You should use my like, like, label. Bro. He seems like he has like plenty of power in his recording contract. I don't think he's no. like, like he's trying to get out you of anything. Think, man, that's we all thought that about Bruno Mars. Yeah, that's what I always thought. <laughs> Bruno Mars is the one before Bruno Mars walked walked so Abel could run. Bro. Little tiny bro, legs. <laughs> Bruno Mars like a seems five, like six the, ass. <laughs> Bruno Mars seems like the kind of guy in the beginning that was like, I'll take anything you put in front of me and sign it. <laughs> he was hungry, he's, he's, st- he's still on that he same hungry. he's still on that same contract from 2009. Freaking <laughs> He's still making money off of iTunes, bro. bro. We gotta we gotta do an intro. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thanksgiving. Thanks Rick, for listening. Rick and Bond, Sean Lee, Sean Lee Cortez, Gunner Lee on all internet platforms. Look him up. Yeah, yeah.